Hello, I'm Javis Lewis and welcome back to a series about Das Studio, the free 3D content manipulation app from Das 3D. In this episode, I'm going to tell you about two things and they're both equally important, often overlooked, of course. One is how do we change the position of the origin point or the pivot point that we've been talking about in the last couple of videos. So the position of where that little 3D manipulation gadget resides and seemingly moves our objects around. And I want to show you how to set that and to make that possible I'm going to introduce you to some other types of viewports we haven't spoken about yet. So that's all very abstract talk really let's have a look at it that's much much easier isn't it so uh, i have a scene here with a cube in it which i've created with a primitive and you can see that uh, the manipulator gadget is kind of at the center bottom of the cube it's probably easier if we just tumble this around and have a look right at the bottom you can see that it's right at the bottom and lined up with the bottom here and that's fine and I can go and rotate my cube around with this little uh, free rotation tool. It'll rotate around the bottom center bottom face there. But what if I wanted to rotate that cube exactly around that point up here? So I'm thinking if you're building, say, a door, for example, the door doesn't rotate in the middle of it. The door kind of rotates on one side of it and then kind of opens and closes, doesn't it? So there has to be a way to move this thing around so that it becomes more useful to us. So let's see how we do that. The secret ingredient here is something called the joint editor. It does have its own icon, but currently on my workspace, it isn't displayed. So I'm using the city limits light layout and I don't see it up here. And that's fine. I mean, I hardly ever use it. So it's just as fast for me to go over to the tools tab up here and then just select the joint editor from here. You can tweak your workspace to include that icon, but I hardly ever use it, so it's, it's fine for me to know that this is what I need, the joint editor selected, and then I can see that none of these tools are currently selected. But also you can see that our 3D manipulator gadget has kind of split up into a red thing and a green thing. Oh, what's going on there? It's all crazy. Furthermore, if you zoom in, then you can see that the gadget now changes size with it. That wasn't happening before. So that's one of those things. If ever you see this split thing, you probably have selected a tool that you don't want unless you know what you're doing, which I'm showing you how to do that now. So the red thing, we can completely ignore. The green thing is in the position where our 3D gadget used to reside. And just as before, I can zoom in and I can tweak it by just moving it around any which way I like it to be. So in my case, I'm going to go and move this thing to the top left corner here. So I could just go and move it up and that could be the top of the cube here somewhere. And then I can kind of move it up here and then kind of looks like it's in the correct position and I move it forward. And yeah, that kind of forward. I'm looking at it. This, you know, could well be the correct position. But then of course, if I tumble around, then I see, ah, oh, this is not the correct position. So I can go, hmm, okay, could I can probably gonna have to shift this over here and then that needs to go over here and then I can move it around and I'm thinking, oh, that's still not the right position. God. So I could spend a lot of my very short remaining time on the planet on doing that or I can do it, it slightly different way by uh, not using the perspective view to line this thing up with a particular point. And that's a very important concept to remember that we can, we don't only have the perspective view in Das Studio, we also have what's sometimes referred to as the orthographic views. Uh, the jury is kind of out if they're really true orthographic views or not, because really nobody can tell. Um, the, there's, for example, there's the front view, and that gives us a clear indication of just the front, and I don't seem to see a perspective. Yet again, I might do. I don't know if the sides of the cube are curving in or if they're totally parallel and flat. I can't really see that. But what I can see is that I can now move my green little gadget to the very top left corner, at least from the front view. So I can do that very accurately from here. And now I can go and have a look at the right side of 
the cube and uh, I can see that well it's almost there let's zoom in there it's almost there it just needs to be tweaked to, uh, it's a little bit over here and now if I switch this back to my perspective view I will see that that green thing is now properly lined up in all viewports in all directions so to say so that's a very helpful way of lining objects up with one another. Switch between these viewports. The perspective view is good to get a little bit of a, a proper window into our 3D world, but the other views are great for lining things up with one another so that they're really there where you think they are, not get any nasty surprises as soon as you tumble the camera around like I just did. So there we go, that's that. Um, we're still in the joint editor and these two little gadgets are still split up. So as soon as I go back to any of my direct manipulation tools here, for example, the universal manipulator, then the gadget comes back, the gizmo comes back as we remember it. And of course, it's now in a different spot. So very exciting. That means now if I rotate around that object, the object will now rotate around my new pivot point or origin point. I keep using both of these things because different apps call this point different things. So Blender, for example, calls this the origin point. I believe Carrara calls it the hot point and other apps call it other things. So origin point, hot point, pivot point is kind of, you know, it's, it's all the same thing. I don't know if Das Studio actually has a particular title for that very important point in our 3D objects. Now, speaking of these viewports here, let me show you one other thing that can come in handy when you line things up with one another. And that's showing more than one viewport at the same time. This is also often helpful if you want to have one rendered viewport showing and one non-rendered viewport showing. And you can use the same principle there. So up at the window tab, we've previously looked at the tabs and panes. We've looked at the workspace and the style, but we haven't looked at the viewports yet. And this is where I can set how many viewports I'd like to see in my current viewport at the same time. So right now I'm seeing a single view, but I can also have a look at a side-by-side -side view and these can be independently configured from one another. So if I hover over this, I can then uh, tumble my camera around in here. And if I hover over here, then I can move this thing around just like that. And I can also configure them independently depending on what type of draw style I would like in each viewport or what camera I'm actually looking at. So I could have two perspective viewports and then configure this one to show me a wireframe if I wanted to. So completely independent. The other thing that makes sense is uh, to display the, either the side by side or the top and bottom, really depending on how big your screen is. And then there's another thing here that I like using, which is the four views. So this is typically one perspective view followed by the uh, front view, the left view and the right view or the top view. And that gives me a really good indication of what my objects look like in relation to one another and of course where what point is. So right now I can see that my pivot point is in the exact corner here. But it'll be very easy for me to move it to a different part of my object. So that's a quick introduction of how you can have multiple viewports and of course how you can change the pivot point or the origin point on your objects in Das Studio. Try it out and play around with it and see what you find. If you have any questions then you know don't hesitate to go ahead and ask me down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it then please share it with friends, family and total strangers and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.